Hi everyone, so today I've got my Celestron Edge 11 HD telescope and as you've seen in my uh, previous video I would ordered a few things uh, to install onto the mount so today uh, we're going to be installing the finder scope the Celestron motor focuser and the Celestron StarSense Auto Align Kit Unfortunately I was going to install the new top rail that I could use to mount my guide scope, but unfortunately I unrolled, I ordered uh, the wrong one, so that will not be happening uh, today, and a new one uh, is on order. So first off, we're going to get into the autofocuser. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to slew the uh, scope round, releasing the clutches, so I can work on the top of the telescope uh, while it's horizontal, just so that nothing... Uh, disappears and it uh, helps me to keep everything square as I uh, fix things. So inside the box we have got obviously the instruction manual, the cable for connecting to the auxiliary port between the auto aligner camera, we've got an adapter piece, a little screwdriver, hex key and wrench and a couple of adapter plates. Now these two adapter plates, uh, the mount uh, for the smaller um, Edge HD and there's a larger one for the 11 uh, and the 14. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull off the focus tube, focus adjuster uh, rubber, if it's going to come up, it should just pull straight off, it's just a friction fit with the, the rubber handle, there we go, and because this is the larger um, telescope, we won't be needing uh, the adapter grommet, uh, which acts as a spacer, uh, this one is for the, the smaller telescope, so next up, we're going to fit uh, the mounting plate. Now this is the bottom side of the telescope, so I'm going to be pointing the, uh, the motor control down the way, so it's going to sit uh, in that position. So first things first, we need to remove uh, the mounting plate on the existing focus adjuster. Just the three screws. And one of the important things to do when installing the motor kit is making sure everything continues to be uh, aligned square. Otherwise, uh, there is possibility that you get to the uh, motor stalling uh, just as it comes out of alignment. So I've removed the plate and the three screws using the provided screwdriver next up take the new plate and we line it up which way it wants to go around there's three screws holes line up with the existing three holes and I can find them I've buried in the recess there somewhere there I'm not going to put it tight yet, I'm just going to get all the screws in first. And we just want to make sure that everything continues to remain square in the bracket. When I started a First I checked how many turns uh, the focuser was from end to end and it was around about 34 turns so I descended it back to the 17th turn although this isn't really required to do as the configuration software, calibration software uh, will do that uh, itself. So now that we've got that square we'll just nip it up, it doesn't have to be too tight otherwise we can end up putting strain on the 
equipment. Now we want to make sure that the arrow is pointing to the white line, which is for making sure you can get access to uh, the hex screw for clamping down uh, onto uh, the uh, shaft of the focuser. So we'll just gently turn that round just a fraction until it's in the middle. And the two hex screws are already uh, in the um, motor assembly. So we can slide that into position. I need to loosen off that a little bit. It's just a little bit tight. Put that into place. Seems to be sitting nice there. Sitting square. And we can just proceed to turn down again. You don't want to over tighten one before the other. Just keep them a nice even tightness there just to make sure everything continues to remain snug. And that is that in place. And then the final thing to do is just to tighten the clamp onto the, the, sh the focusing shaft. Again, you want to over tighten it. And there we have it. Motor focuser installed and we'll do the software piece uh, in a minute. So next up we're going to install the auto, auto aligning uh, kit. So to do that I'm going to rotate the scope again so that I'm working on the, the horizontal uh, to make things just a little bit easier and safer. So if I swing it around, here we can see the right hand side of the scope is where the right hand set of mounting uh, screws are. So that's that level. I'll just lock off the clutches. Okay. So we're going to be mounting on these two screws uh, here. Let me just turn that camera around a little bit. There we go. Okay, so in the box, we've got the usual instructions. The lack of the camera itself and it's mounting plate which isn't screwed on. Mounts in into there like that. And we've got a couple of screws in the bag and that hex screw. Okay, so first things first, we're going to remove head screws on the top of the telescope and that's uh, these two here now these looks slightly shorter than the ones supplied let me just check yes they are okay so I wasn't convinced the screws were the same or tight but it uh, looks like they are I've just tried them so let's do that again change the screwdriver which helped. So into the top mount, screw it down. And just try and get it parallel to the mount and just nip that up. And there we have it, one bracket. Camera then just slides on to there, and you can see there's two holes here, which are for these locking screws, which come with the camera to hold it onto its rail. And there we have it, one auto line installed. And again, we'll do the software all together, same as I did for the uh, focus out, just shortly. Okay. 
So next up we're going to install the finder scope. Uh, in reality you don't really need to use this if you're using the polar alignment but seeing as I've got screw holes there for it uh, I might as well and I can always take it off at a later date. But one thing to note is with my finder scope uh, it's a celestron and it will actually fit the same mount as the polar alignment so you could always chop and change uh, should, you be, should you want to. So first off let's swing around again so I'm working horizontal on the other axis. On the other side, I should say, I can reach my clutch and I'll swing around. There we go. So we're now working on the left hand side and we'll remove the two screws. Now, my screw, sorry, my finger scope didn't come with any longer screws, which uh, were provided with the finder scope, uh, sorry, with the alignment kit. However, for some reason on this telescope, the screws on the left hand side are longer than the screws that are provided on the right hand side. So they are going to fit just fine. So I'll remove the uh, finder scope off its bracket, slide that out, and now taking the two screws, we can mount this. Oh, I'm on the wrong side now. Uh, to the left hand side. Before I tighten that up, I just want to have a quick check to make how sure how square the finder scope is relative relative to the, to the telescope. So I'll just snug that up and look down its axis and there we go, that's it square now. Tighten up that left screw just to hold it in place. Remove the finder scope. There we go. Back in its mount. All looks good. Spin around. And there you can see we have got both the finer scope and the polar alignment they are sitting like a set of Mickey Mouse ears. Now obviously I'll probably take these off at a later date but uh, we've got them at the moment so we might as well try them. So that's it for part one of the video. In the second part we'll take a look at all the uh, software elements and uh, we'll see how we got on with there. So I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.